<laughs> Silly me. I assumed that I was going to be all ready and rested and raring to go to do a video yesterday afternoon after our big Thanksgiving feast at noon. <laughs> Total food coma. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, those of you uh, who live in the States, at least, or, uh, or are from the States, celebrate Thanksgiving. I hope you were able to observe it and celebrate it uh, with whom you wanted to and uh, in the way that you wanted to. That's really what matters. For me, Thanksgiving is about uh, being with my family, uh, just my immediate family, really. Uh, we, the closest relatives we have are really getting on in years, and they live on the other side of the mountains. And by November, mid-November usually in Oregon, uh, going over the mountains is kind of treacherous. Uh, so we see each other several times throughout the year anyway. So maybe one of these days we will get together and have a true family gathering for uh, Thanksgiving. But anyway, we had a very nice, quiet Thanksgiving at home. I hope you guys uh, had a similarly enjoyable Thanksgiving. Not necessarily in the same way, but anyway. Uh, yes, today I'm coming at you with Chapter 23 of my whole darn CD collection. Uh, yes, I finished the uh, the Everything with Vogels section uh, in my last chapter, uh, ending with uh, the end of the letter Z, or Z for those of you in Canada. Uh, but, but that is not the end. I've still got the instrumentals, which is what I'm going to do starting today, as well as soundtracks, holiday albums, comedy and spoken word, compilations, and box sets. So I've still got quite a ways to go. I don't think even all those things combined are going to be nearly as long as the stuff with vocals. So uh, we're on the downhill slope, uh, at least in terms of number of chapters. It's not the quality of what I'm going to show you is not going downhill, that's for sure. Anyway, um, as always, I'm going to start before I get started with the actual next block of my Hold On CD collection, show you what I added to my collection in the uh, chapters I've already covered uh, since I did my last video, and I got to quite a few here. Obviously, from now on, it's going to uh, include A to Z, and everything from A to Z in vocals, so uh, perhaps these... Uh, uh, recent editions uh, chapters are going to be a little bit longer. Anyway, first thing, the Bay City Rollers, uh, the definitive collection. I picked this up at a uh, St. Vinny's store recently. I think it was at St. Vinny's. Uh, and uh, yes, a bunch of uh, their classic hits, fr hits from the 70s. I think my sister would have really liked this. I don't know if she was actually into the Bay City Rollers or not, but uh, just fun, kind of cheesy 70s pop. What the heck, right? Then we have not-so-cheesy stuff, uh, The Cars with Heartbeat City. I think I showed you... Sorry about the glare. I think I showed you the uh, their self-titled album, which I got uh, a couple months ago. But yes, Heartbeat City, it's got their, uh, their hit Magic, as well as their hit Drive, you might think was a huge MTV hit. And uh, so, yeah, an excellent chapter in the Cars discography. And then we have a two-disc set from Nat King Cole, which I um, transplanted into a slim double case, uh, the Nat King Cole story. I first thought this was a compilation of just previously recorded stuff, but uh, no, it does have a lot of his uh, hits from his career, but they are new recordings of those hits. So uh, I decided to go ahead and uh, uh, keep this as a replacement for the previous compilation. It was just a one-disc compilation I had. But uh, yeah, it's got pretty much all of his... Uh, so I think there was one that I was missing. Oh yeah, I, I think this one does not have L-O-V-E, which I really enjoyed. But yes, this does have Nature Boy, Walking My Baby Back Home, uh, For sentiment, for Sentimental Reasons, uh, Route 66. That was a huge hit for him. And this has got to have um, Unforgettable. Yes, it's got that on there. Mona Lisa, Orange Colored Sky. All of his big hits just uh, uh, in... New recordings. So, uh, well, new as in, well, this obviously was from the 60s. Uh, they, this uh, this CD was released in 1991, but anyway. Then I have a uh, an artist I discovered thanks to uh, House of Records has been putting a lot of stuff from uh, a distribution rep who lived in the area, recently retired, and he had like 15 boxes of CDs that he... Uh, from clearing out his garage, he just gave to House of Records. 
and they were all promo CDs from his work as a distribution rep. So I um, they've been putting all those in the $1 section. And I have a particular affinity for the New West label, New West, Re New West Records. So I've been trying a lot of their stuff. And this was uh, one that really, uh, really clicked. I really enjoyed this guy. Anthony D'Amato, I think is how you pronounce his name. And this is his album, The Shipwreck from the Shore. And then also I picked up his um, subsequent album, Cold Snap, uh, for both of them for a dollar at Mahasa Records. So yeah, very good stuff. Uh, indie pop rock with a little bit of an Americana twist, as uh, most New West Records artists are. They are either full on into the Americana or country pop folk stuff, or they just kind of graze that uh, that particular subgenre. Uh, but then we're going ahead and getting into some blues here. I picked this up, I think, at Epic Seconds for two and a half bucks. Uh, the very best of John Lee Hooker. Never tried any of his stuff before, except maybe there was like one or two, uh, you know, a track on the occasional compilation that I have. Uh, but yeah, never tried an actual CD full of his stuff. So uh, pretty good stuff. I'm not a huge blues fan, but uh, it, it's pretty good stuff. Then we have something that's uh, a little bit newer. The Jonas Brothers, Happiness Begins. One dollar at uh, St. Vinny's, still sealed for a dollar. So, what the heck? Um, and I, I cannot remember how the song "Sucker" goes. I actually have not listened to this one yet. Uh, it, it's loaded onto my phone. I uh, ripped it to MP3 and loaded it on, onto my phone. But I actually have not gotten around to listening to it yet. I need to do that. That's that's the rare exception with uh, CDs that I have actually added to my collection are ones that I have listened to, or I have ripped onto my phone. And uh, usually, by the time I do one of these videos, I have listened to the stuff on my phone, but that's an exception so far. Anyway, uh, the rest of these are not exceptions. Uh, Mike and the Mechanics. This was a uh, rock group that was fairly popular in the 80s. They had a couple of uh, pretty decent hits. Uh, this one is their self-titled album. Uh, Silent Running is was a hit of theirs, and All I, Need, All I Need is a Miracle. That was a big hit of theirs. But yes, excellent stuff, and those... Their hits were the only stuff that I knew of theirs, so I was uh, very happy to get uh, this CD as their debut, as well as their follow-up, Living Years. Of course, the title track is one of the big hits of the 80s. It's an excellent ballad, one of the all-time radio hits of the 80s. So yeah, I, w I was happy to hear more of their stuff than the radio hits that we all know. So yeah, very good stuff. And then uh, dialing back the clock here again, we have... Roy Orbison with his uh, Monument Records debut album, Lonely and Blue. Uh, this was a, uh, a reissue, obviously, since they didn't have CDs in the 60s. Uh, so yeah, this has um, Only the Lonely, his big hit from back there. Uh, what was There was another couple songs in there. Oh, I guess that was the only uh, significant chart hit off of this album. I thought there was another one. But he does a cover of the Everly Brothers' Bye Bye Love. I was about to say Bye Bye Baby. Actually, I, I almost said Bye Bye Bye, the NSYNC song. That's, he definitely didn't do a cover of that one. Uh, and then Cry. I think this might have been the Johnny Ray song that he did a cover of. But uh, yeah, very good stuff. I, I, I rather like Roy Orbison. Not a huge fan of his, but uh, I like his stuff. Then we have an uh, uh, artist who recently passed away. He passed away last year. And uh, this is the lesser known chapter of his career. He fronted a group called The First Edition at Kenny Rogers. I file this under Kenny Rogers since it's billed as Kenny Rogers and the first edition. This is a greatest hits uh, disc of theirs. Uh, Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town, that was a big hit of theirs. And uh, the first song that I um, had heard of his was a song that my sister turned me on to, Just Dropped In to See What Condition My Condition Is In. That's a great song. I really enjoy that one. And then... Uh, Let's see, uh, Reuben James, I think, was a really uh, big hit of theirs. Something's Burning, I think, was also a, a significant hit. But, uh, yeah, good stuff. I rather like it. Uh, more pop than country. Uh, Kenny wouldn't really go into country until his solo years. Then we have another... Uh, we actually have uh, a few more Greatest Hits collections coming up here. But, yes, I found a handful of Greatest Hits CDs at uh, St. Vinny's recently, which I actually... These were not part of the haul video that I did... Um, what, my last video, I guess, was my haul. Anyway, uh, Simply Red, their greatest hits. Uh, and as seems to happen sometimes with greatest hit CDs, I listen to it and I realize, oh, 
these guys did that song too? Oh yeah, these guys did that song too. You know, it's like one after the other comes up and I didn't realize this was, that uh, they were uh, Simply Red songs. Holding Back the Years, I just, I never knew. I mean, I knew the song, I just didn't know it was a Simply Red song. And then uh, what was the other one? Of course, now that I've, I'm in front of the camera, I can't remember what the, the songs that I really, really enjoyed and remembered were on these uh, albums. But uh, yeah. Oh, and If You Don't Know Be My Now. I didn't realize that they did a, a hit for that. That was a, uh, the original song was back in the 60s from a soul group. And uh, Simply Red did a fairly popular uh, hit single version of that. And another um, greatest hits package we have is by Sixpence None the Richer. I think I got these guys a uh, self-titled CD in a bargain bag recently. It didn't quite stick. I got rid of it, but I was happy to see this uh, CD at St. Finney's. And of course it has Kiss Me, the big popular song that was in a whole bunch of movies back in the late 90s. But they also do uh, a few covers on this album, uh, which I didn't know they did. They did a cover of ABBA's Dancing Queen which was uh, pretty good. And of course, Crowded Houses, Don't Dream It's Over, and The Laws, There She Goes. I did know those uh, that they did those covers, but uh, very nice to have all of those on the CD. Oh, and the bonus track, the last track on the CD, is a Japanese version of Kiss Me, which is interesting to have. It's interesting to listen to. So they sing the verses in Japanese and the chorus in uh, English. And then uh, another throwback hit album, uh, Dusty Springfield, a, a girl called Dusty, and uh, this one apparently is uh, full of remixes. It's got you know the same track listing with a bunch of bonus tracks, but the track listing of the original portion of the album. Several of the songs are remixes because I guess the original tapes were gone or something. I, I remember reading, I read read about it on Wikipedia when I picked up the album like a couple months ago, uh, and I don't remember the story off the top of my head, but. Uh, I do still have, at least I'm pretty sure I still have, well, maybe I don't, The uh, an actual hits collection of the original versions of some of these songs in this. But yes, this one has, oh, I didn't, I bumped the table. This one has uh, You Don't Own Me, as well as uh, 24 Hours from Tulsa, uh, Anyone Who Had a Heart, Will You Love Me Tomorrow, Wishing and Hoping, I Only Want to Be With You, and uh, so, yeah. A good selection of songs on here. And then uh, yet another greatest hits. Oh, this, this chapter is, or the uh, recent arrivals thing is going on forever. Sorry about that. But uh, yes, the next greatest hits one I have is uh, Stray Cats. Uh, so Rock This Town, the best of the Stray Cats, a 10-song uh, collection. Uh, it uh, doesn't have a lot of uh, fat on there. It's just it's just the hits. So, yeah. And then the last of my recent arrivals is Rocket House by Chris Whitley. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I had heard one of the songs off of this, uh, the opening track, actually, To Joy, Revolution of the Innocents. Uh, it was on a compilation that I heard a long time ago, and it kind of intrigued me. So, uh, But since then, I'd basically forgotten about it. But I found this one again in the uh, at the thrift store, uh, picked it up and listened to it, and uh, I, I rather like it. Don't know if I love it as much as that uh, that song that I heard originally, but uh, I have a feeling it will be a grower. It'll grow on me over the years. So yeah, definitely good stuff for my uh, recent arrivals. I'll set that out of the way and stop for a water break. Excuse me. So now on we go with the actual next block of my whole darn CD collection. Ah. First half of the CDs. Uh, so I'm going to try and go through these kind of quickly. These are all instrumental, so a lot of you guys are probably not going to be into this as much as the rock and pop and R&B and country and vocal jazz and all that stuff. And all that jazz. So I'll kind of go through these quickly. But if there's anything you'd like to know more about in here, let me know down, look, eh, let me know down in the comment section, and I'd be happy to do a, you know, a viewer request spotlight video. Maybe I'll gather up some requests and do it that way. Anyway, first off here um, is Mindy Abair. She is a jazz saxophonist. This is her, this might be her, I think this is her major label debut album, Come As You Are. And I picked that up because her CD, Lifeless Ordinary, I 
if I recall correctly, was a uh, Barkin Bag CD that I really enjoyed. So, yes, not a lot of female instrumentalists in the jazz field. Uh, there are plenty of female jazz vocalists out there, but uh, yeah, uh, f female instrumentalists, a little uh, un slightly unusual, kind of hard to come by. So uh, I was happy to add that to my collection. Then we have a uh, New Age slash Smooth Jazz duo calling themselves Acoustic Alchemy. And I have, I only have two of their albums. This one is uh, Against the Grain, which was really good. They've been hit and miss. It took a while for me to find an album that I really latched onto and enjoyed. Uh, and this one, was this one a bargain bag CD? I can't remember if it was or not. Uh, Arcanum is the other Acoustic Alchemy album that I have. So very good stuff. Now this next artist, I have uh, several al of his albums on vinyl, but this was the only one of his, yeah, the only one of his that I have on CD. And it is a uh, compilation of rare and unreleased tracks called Lost Treasures. It is by Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. Classic instrumental pop group from the 60s. Uh, Herb Alpert is like, he's just up there. Uh, you all know, or at least you know by the uh, its cover art, uh, Whipped Cream and Other Delights. It's an excellent album. Check it out. Then we have an artist who uh, has worked with, uh, or yeah, I think he's still alive. He worked with David Bowie, but I didn't realize that until years after I got this. And this that's a topic that I can probably do its own video on, but uh, I, I'll i I'll stop it there just, you know, to, to run the risk, to avoid the risk of making this video too long. Carlos Alomar. He worked with David Bowie. There you go. Uh, and this is his uh, album, Dream Generator. This is a uh, New Age um, instrumental album that he did. Very good stuff. And there is Mr. Alomar on the back. But yes, there are several artists that I discovered in my New Age phase that I didn't realize were more famous for other stuff. That's what I was trying to say a minute ago. And that's what I think I can do a video on at some point. And then we have, this was a CD from my sister's collection, uh, the best of Marc Antoine. He is a jazz guitarist. I believe he's a, he's a guitarist. Uh, might be a saxophonist, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. She loved that uh, instrumental jazz, particularly saxophone. Then we have, this This one was, I believe, in a bargain bag last year. Aral, I believe is how you pronounce it. And this is, uh, yeah, kind of a world music sort of stuff uh, from the Higher Octave label. And yes, I've talked recently about the uh, possibility of doing a uh, Label Spotlight series of videos, and I ha I see it turns out I have quite a few albums from the Higher Octave label, so that's a label I can do a series on. Now, this next, uh, this next case, I guess you'd say, um, is from the Binder Hall that I did last, last year. Might have been the year before. Uh, picked up a couple of binders full of those CD pocket pages, from House of Records, they were on the freebie shelf, had a whole bunch of stuff in it. None of them had cases, and so some of these, the CDs I wanted to keep, I made my own cases and inserts for, or, well, no, I couldn't make my own cases. I got empty cases, made my own inserts for them, and this is one of those, uh, two albums piggybacked onto one jewel case. This is a guy named David Arkenstone, and these are his two albums from the private label, Valley in the Clouds and Citizen of Time. And the, uh, the case is a blue or a purple tinted jewel case that I got, that I had. It's Valley in the Clouds, and Citizen of Time. It's, uh, very good stuff. Two of my uh, favorites from my New Age phase back then. It was kind of cool to be uh, to rediscover some of those old albums. And then we have uh, a team up between David Arkenstone and another artist on the Narada label. That's the label that. Uh, these guys are from. Um, Andrew White pairs up with David Arkenstone for the album Island. Now this one, uh, I actually found the inserts online and printed them out in, on my uh, inkjet printer. So yes, the CD is genuine, as you can see here. It's just the inserts. I made gave it its own case and printed the inserts online. Then we have an artist who uh, is kind of a throwback back to the old, the olden days. Uh, but the, this was from his 80s uh, period, I believe. Uh, Chet Atkins. He is one of the all-time guitar masters from back in the 50s. Uh, this is an 80s album of his called Stay Tuned. 
And then we have uh, another one from the 80s, I believe, or 1990, actually. And on this one, he pairs up with Mark Knopfler. Uh, neck and neck. Guitars have necks. Pun in the album title. I love album, album titles with puns. Then I found this one. I believe this one was in the dollar section at House of Records. And it has tracks from those other two albums, but I decided to pick it up anyway. The Essential Chet Atkins, The Columbia Years. So. And this one... I need to kind of work out how I... Um, how I arrange some of my CDs. Some of it isn't quite optimal for me, and I, I, know I could go into a whole other discussion on that. I'll, I'll ignore it for now. But uh, we have an album by... It's in the B's. Uh, I don't know why. Oh, no, it's in the A's, sorry. It, because it's by the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. That's why it's in the A's. See, see this is what I, what I mean by I need to uh, kind of tweak my storage system. Classical Zoo. Uh, this is kind of a take on the, um, what do you call it, Carnival of the Animals. And actually, he does it does have Carnival of the Animals on here uh, as part of the uh, repertoire on the CD. But yes, uh, it's up Perlman, the famed violinist, is also the narrator of this thing. So I decided to pick it up. I can't remember where I found this one. It might have even been on the freebie shelf. But anyway, I've always liked the Carnival of the Animals, and uh, so I decided to pick that up. And I have uh, appreciate Itzhak Perlman's violin work, so two reasons why I picked that one up. And then we're getting into my Chet Baker section. Uh, several of these I got from a, uh, like a, a 12 or 15 CD lot to purchase on eBay. Uh, so we have Chet Baker and Strings. Chet Baker is an excellent uh, trumpet player. And then he, but he also did uh, singing in some of his, some of his albums, and here we have "Let's Get Lost," the best of Chet Baker sings, and that's a, one thing that you'll notice in this section is some artists do both instrumental albums and albums with vocals. I used to have them in their own separate sections, but I decided it was just too confusing to have the same artist in two different places. So I just you know whatever they're more famous for or whatever took up more of their discography. That's the section I put them in. So, and uh, instrumental is the case with Chet Baker. And we have Chet Baker plays the best of Learner and Low, some uh, show tunes and Great American Songbook stuff. Very good. And also one of those uh, Starbucks Hear Music compilations. Uh, Chet Baker, Too Cool. This is a very good one. Did my, Was this in my sister's collection? I can't remember. It might have been. Yes, it's it's been long enough now that I'm starting to have trouble remembering if something if certain things were in my sister's collection. And then we have the last of my Chet Baker uh, library, Chet Baker in New York. So uh, good stuff. I'm I'm developing a bit of an affinity for Chet Baker. I have to say. Then we have uh, this one was I think this was also from a recent purchase at. Um, uh, St. Finney's. The Essential Joshua Bell. He is a uh, classical viol violinist, and this is a two-disc set of his stuff. Uh, mostly classical. you got some easy listening on uh, disc two, and uh, some of these uh, on some of the tracks he is accompanied by John Williams, a uh, favorite film composer of mine. But uh, John Williams accompanies him on piano, which was his, his uh, instrument, which he started out with doing jazz piano before he became a film composer. So, uh, but he also does uh, conducting an, an orchestra that uh, Joshua Bell is a soloist in, also on some of those tracks. So, very cool. Speaking of piano, we have a jazz pianist that I uh, have enjoyed for a number of years, David Benoit. And this is his album Urban Daydreams. And we've got Waiting for Spring. This is kind of a... Uh, this is not actually a Christmas album. It's just a winter-themed album. It doesn't have any Christmas songs on it, but uh, very nice, as all of his albums are that I have uh, happened upon late, uh, so far. And then Inner Motion, another one. And then The Best of David Benoit from uh, 1987 to 1995. And a few more. Uh, this one is very, very nice. I think this one was in my sister's collection. 
here's to you, Charlie Brown, 50 great years. So it's a salute to uh, Vince Guaraldi's music for the Charlie Brown specials. Very, very good. Very fun album. And then uh, another one here, Fuzzy Logic. This is one of his more recent albums. Well, 2002. It's more recent. But on this one, he does a cover of Then the Morning Comes by Smash Mouth. Yes, he does a smooth jazz cover of a Smash Mouth song. And interestingly enough, it works. It's, it's, it's something different. Cool idea. And then I have an itchy nose today. I don't know why. And these next two albums, he actually teams up with uh, the frontman of my favorite smooth jazz group of all time, the Rippingtons, Russ Freeman. And this is the Benoit Freeman Project. But uh, they had so much fun doing it that they had a chapter two. So very good stuff. Um, uh, Russ Freeman is a guitarist, so guitar and piano. Very, very cool stuff. And then, excuse me, a little bit of a dry throat today. And I'm only about a third of the way through this block of CDs. I was speaking a minute ago about Chet Baker, who has done both instrumental and vocal albums, but I lump all of his stuff into the instrumental category. Same deal with this next artist, George Benson. Uh, he started out as a uh, jazz guitarist, instrumental guitarist. This is his first album. Uh, it's Uptown is the name of it. It's uh, very, very, very good stuff. And a few of his CDs were in my sister's collection, and so I kind of, my appreciation of him just kind of grew from there. Uh, the George Benson Cookbook is his, I believe, his second album. So yeah, I've got his first two Columbia albums. This next one was in my sister's collection, and it kind of got me started. Shape of, Th Shape of Things to Come. It's a very good one. And then this one was also in, my, in her collection. This was probably one of his most popular, perhaps the most popular of his instrumental albums, Breezen. And I've also got it on uh, vinyl. But then back uh, in the 80s, he tried his hand at singing. And that was, I believe, his most commercially successful single was called Give Me the Night. And it was on pop radio back in the 80s. And it is from the album of the same name, Give Me the Night. Yes, this is... Uh, mostly a vocal album, but as I said, it is in the instrumental category. And then I've got two best of albums, uh, the best of George Benson. And then we have the instrumentals, the best of George Benson. So there we go. And on this next one, he teams up with uh, a jazz soul singer, Al Jarreau, uh, with the out for the album Give It, Up, Given It Up. It's a very good album, and I think this one was also in my sister's collection. <clears throat> and this next one, I think I showed you in a uh, in my haul video, my birthday haul, just last week. A salute to Disney by the Boston Pops with Ar with Arthur Fiedler. Yes, this um, uh, these next CDs are in are under B for Boston Pops. Yes, that's one of the things the the orchestral things I file under the name of the orchestra, and so that's one thing. It's like I'm wondering if. Should I put the orchestral, the orchestra one separately? I don't know. That will probably be forever a. Uh, I'll be going through it in my brain, wondering, can I do it better? Can I do it makes more sense? I don't know. Anyway, another Boston Pops album, and this one is um, Peter and the Wolf, along with uh, Carnival of the Animals and the Nutcracker Suite, and uh, Peter and the Wolf is narrated by Sir Alec Guinness. Ben Kenobi from Star Wars. These aren't the CDs you're looking for. Uh, there's my Alec Guinness impersonation for your enjoyment and uh, for your cringe. Then here we have a uh, artist that... Uh, this is another artist that my sister was into. And I didn't realize until later that he is actually was born and raised, I believe, in Oregon, in the Portland area. Chris Boaty is his name. It's not pronounced Boaty, it's pronounced Boaty. Uh, notice the, the long, uh, the bar over the O here to indicate long O. And this is, I believe, his first album, First Wish. I am missing several albums from his discography, and I'm kind of, as I find them, filling in the blanks. Then we have his first compilation, The Very Best Of, Chris Boaty. Then we're getting into his Columbia years with A Thousand Kisses Deep, along with when I Fall in Love, and this one has 
um, Paula Cole, Billy Childs, Dominic Miller, and Sting appear uh, in guest performances on this album. So it's pretty cool. And then we have another album that's uh, more loaded with guest appearances. To Love Again, the duets. And this on this one he has, again, Sting, Paula Cole, Michael Buble, Jill Scott, Gladys Knight, uh, Steven Tyler, which is an interesting pairing. Uh, and yes, they do mostly, uh, as tends to be uh, one of the hallmarks of Chris, Chris Bote's uh, repertoire, is Great American Songbook Standards. Like uh, with Steven Tyler, he does Smile, the Charlie Chaplin song. Interesting take on it. And, uh, yeah, What Are You Doing the Rest of Your Life is uh, the one he does with Sting. And uh, Good Morning Heartache is the one that he performs with Jill Scott. So, uh, and with Gladys Knight, he performs Lover Man. So, yeah, a good album. And then this one was in the uh, same lot that I got the uh, the Chet Baker CDs I, I, in, I believe. A live album, Chris Bote in Boston. And then one of his more recent uh, studio albums, Impressions. And then uh, Hot Off the Presses, basically. This is his latest album, just released uh, a few weeks ago. Volume 1. A clever title. I guess it's signifying a new chapter in his recording career. Uh, it's uh, it's his, his first album on the Blue Note label. So, uh, And yes, he does a bunch of uh, uh, Great American Songbook Standards. As uh, you can see there, so, and that is Chris Boti. Hang on a second as I switch to the second half of these CDs. Oh, so cool! I think I'm making up for lost time on this, mm. for making the recent arrivals chapter so darn long. And pardon me while I take another drink, another drink of water. Have a drink of bloody. Anyway, uh, here we have, uh, this was another CD in my sister's collection. You will find that uh, quite a number of these uh, instrumental CDs were in my sister's collection. That was a big thing she enjoyed was jazz, instrumental jazz. Uh, the best of Rick Braun. He is, uh, as you can see here, a uh, jazz trumpeter. So is Chris Bote, by the way. I don't know if I ever even mentioned what instrument Chris Bote does, but uh, I guess I mean, my sister enjoyed the jazz trumpet. Then we have, uh, this is the one from uh, my uh, bargain bag, just uh, just last month, I think. Uh, the Braxton Brothers, uh, stepping out. And we have, this is a guy that I kind of want to collect or pick up a few more CDs of his. Uh, Jim Brickman, uh, this is, I believe, his debut album, No Words. Uh, he is a jazz pianist, or uh, more like a new age pianist. I think that's probably the, the more apt uh, description. And then this one, was this one in a uh, bargain bag? I can't remember, but I talked about it a few months back. Uh, White Sand by Paul Brown and Friends. And yes, this had a lot of, uh, this is one that I picked up myself, but my sister would have enjoyed this one because it's got uh, David Benoit in it, uh, Boney James, who is a jazz saxophonist, Al Jarreau, uh, Bobby, Bobby Caldwell, and uh, Huge Groove, who is another uh, jazz artist. So, yeah, good stuff. And then here we have... This is an album, and this is another subject I want to do a video on at some point, and that is um, albums that every seri serious music fan should have, at least in my opinion. And this is one of those albums. Uh, Time Out by the Dave, Dave Brubeck Quartet. This is the uh, three-CD, or two-CD two and a DVD deluxe edition. You can see the... Uh, table of the, the contents there, the track listings and so forth. Uh, yeah, this is a, an absolutely landmark album in the world of jazz. So yes, the two CDs and the DVD here. Uh, but yes, um, this was the first time that uh, an artist really experimented with unconventional time signatures in Western jazz music. So that's, that's why it's kind of it's kind of a landmark album. And then he decided to carry on the concept uh, a few years later with Time Further Out, uh, the, the, the sequel album, if you will. Pretty good stuff. And then, um, again, carrying on the tradition of uh, lumping 
when when appropriate lumping vocal albums in with instrumental albums. This is Vocal Encounters. This is another Dave Brubeck album. And it's got, uh, let's see, Tony Bennett, Louis Armstrong, Carmen McRae, uh, Lambert Hendricks and Ross, Peter, Paul, and Mary, and the list goes on of uh, artists that he's worked with. And I believe this is a compilation. Yes, 18-track 18, 18 compilation. So, uh, but yeah, lots of fun with that one. And then we're back uh, to an artist that um, from the Narada label from my early days in uh, New Age listening, Peter Buffett. And this is his album, The Waiting. This is uh, electronic music. Uh, it's just uh, very cool, I have to say. And uh, the next album in uh, that in his discography, uh, Lost Frontier. And the song, if you can find the song Spike by Peter Buffett, that's one of the more, uh, you know, rhythmic and uh, almost dancey songs in the genre. A lot of the other stuff is more, uh, more ambient and kind of more laid back. But Spike is one of those that you can kind of it's one of those that I think anybody could uh, get into. So look for Spike by Peter Buffett. Um, what is the... I'm, I cannot, can't think of uh, one of the other better songs of his off the top of my head. But anyway, then we're on to the Canadian Brass, a, uh, a small brass ensemble, usually about five members. And this is their album Champions. And they do an interesting repertoire here. They do a couple of pop songs, like uh, Living for the City by Stevie Wonder and Honky Cat by Elton John, as well as, uh, oh, A Whiter Shade of Pale by Procol Harum. But they also do some other uh, more band, you know, more traditional band-worthy stuff, too. How do you like that for an explanation? Pretty lame explanation, isn't it? Anyway, then we have a compilation of theirs, The Essential Canadian Brass. Stuff. And then um, this one is by um, the person who did the uh, composed the score for the Disney movie Tron from 1982. That's how I first found out about this artist, and uh, I kind of went looking for her previous work. And this is uh, this is probably probably her most famous album. It's called Switched On Bach. And it is um, electronic interpret interpretations of classical music. So, yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, seek it out if um, if you're looking for something interesting. And then we have a an organist that I found out. I can't remember how I found out about this guy, but uh, he's kind of uh, <clears throat> mostly classical organist, but he's a, a bit avant-garde in his approach. Uh, but he's very interesting to listen to and, and an interesting guy to watch also. Cameron Carpenter is his name, and uh, Revolutionary, this is uh, his the name of this album. And I've also got one other album of his, If You Could Read My Mind. And so, I mean, yeah, you, you look at the, the cover, the covers of his albums, and it kind of, you know, he's, you can kind of tell he's got a bit of a, an unconventional approach. But yeah, he also puts a couple of his own, uh, his own composi compositions in these, but it is, it is mostly classical repertoire for the organ. Uh, the organ is his instrument of choice. Then we have, darn it, I was going to look up this guy. And oh, I th um, to try and remember what band he was famous for. And this is another one of those that I could put on my list of uh, artists I knew from somewhere else before their most famous gig. And this is Craig Chakiso. And uh, go ahead and put it down in the comments. Or actually, I think I will put it um, below me here on in the text of who this guy worked with before. I cannot remember off the top of my head. Uh, but yes, I've got oh four uh, four of his albums, his um, acoustic new age instrumental albums. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, acoustic highway is his debut solo album. Then he did acoustic planet, and we have a thousand pictures. And then his fourth album, Once in a Blue Universe. So, yeah. Very, very good stuff. Nice, kind of mellow, relaxing stuff. And that, that's what a lot of this stuff is for me. It's it, it's kind of stuff that I can put on in the background if I want to have stuff that really relaxes me and stuff. 
Then we have, uh, this guy was kind of a, a bit of a blues guitarist. He, uh, uh, the electric guitar was his, his, in, yeah, his instrument. Charlie Christian, he was kind of a pioneer back in the uh, 50s, 40s and 50s. So yeah, I, I heard about him in a documentary somewhere. And then like, just like a month or so later, I found this CD and picked it up. Really interesting. And then uh, this artist, I had a couple of her individual albums and I decided, you know, just the stuff that was on this compilation was enough for me. Suzanne Chiani, I think is how you pronounce it. C-I-A-N-I -I is how you spell her last name. But yes, she is a, a fairly rare, again, fairly rare female artist in the um, instrumental New Age uh, music movement. And then this Excuse me, i got to take a drink again. My throat has been a bit sore today for some reason. And then this guy was in... Um, actually, I think he was in two of my bargain bags. I got his first album and second album in... I believe they might have actually been um, bargain bags, uh, you know, in adjacent months. One month right after the other one. Jesse Cook, he, is, uh, he does Latin guitar. That's his thing. And this is his debut album, Tempest. His sophomore album, Gravity. And I enjoyed those enough that I just kind of went on from there. And, well, it helped that I found, I think, all three of these in uh, the... It was either the $1 section or the $2.5 section at Epic Seconds. Uh, his album, Vertigo. Then his fourth album, Free Fall. And then his album, Nomad. Those are his first five albums. And then I think there's an album or two between that one and the Rumba Foundation. This one was actually in my sister's collection. And I guess I had forgotten at the time that I picked up, or uh, yeah, I, I did pick up the Jesse Cook albums for my bargain bag when I bagged up, you know, 24 bags all at once from, you know, getting the CDs cheap. I, at the time, I had forgotten that Jesse Cook, a Jesse Cook CD was in my sister's collection. So, of course, maybe it was in the back of my mind, and so subliminally I picked up his more recent album. Anyway, that's a theory. Then we have some classical music here by Copeland, Aaron Copeland. Uh, he was an American composer. He did uh, Rodeo and Billy the Kid and Fanfare for the Common Man and uh, some other things that you've probably heard of. And this is uh, Leonard Bernstein conducting the New York Philharmonic. I am curious to see that movie that, I um, can't remember what the actor's name is now, uh, is about to put out, uh, Maestro, I think is the name of it, uh, a bio biographical film on Leonard Bernstein. I'm kind of interested to see that. Anyway, then here, this next one, it was in a bargain bag last year, I believe. It's a, an acid jazz CD. Um, the uh, artist is Corduroy, and the album is called Out of Here. Interesting stuff. I don't think I'd ever heard uh, acid jazz before, so that was an interesting uh, thing. Then we have this one. Was this one in my sister's collection? I think it was. Uh, Brian Culbertson. He is a guitarist? I honestly can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, yes, Nice and Slow is the name of this album. Excuse me. And he features Herb Alpert, Jeff Lorber, who is a jazz saxophonist, uh, Dave Cause, who was another saxophonist. Kenny Lattimore, Kirk Whalem, who was also a jazz saxophonist. There's, there's lots of saxophonists in jazz. And uh, Kenny Lattimore, who I think I also already mentioned. He's in two tracks on this. So, yeah, good stuff. And I can see why my sister, I'm pretty sure that one was in my sister's collection. She enjoyed all those artists. And then uh, another Brian Culbertson album. I kind of like this one. It's got a bit more of a funk approach, as you know, as the title says, uh, bringing back the funk. And on this one, uh, he has guest assists from Bootsy Collins, uh, Music Soul Child, uh, Gerald Albright, Ladisi, uh, and a couple of other artists. So yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. And then this one, I think this was in a. Uh, Bargain Bag also. This is uh, an organ CD again. But this is more classical organ. Uh, Carlo Curley is the name of the artist, and the album is called Amazing Grace. So, yeah. not much to say about that one. Then we have the guy that is... Uh, 
he is the brains or the, the, the linchpin or the, the front man for Mannheim Steamroller, uh, Chip Davis. And this is, uh, I don't know if you can call it a solo album, but it's under Chip Davis. That's where I have it filed. It's called Party, Music That Cooks. This one, I think, was in um, on the freebie shelf at House of Records. So it looked interesting. And, uh, all that I knew of Chip Davis was his Mannheim Steamroller stuff, so I decided to pick it up and give it a, give it a go. And then we have another uh, uh, key album in the world jazz, uh, kind of blue by Miles Davis, and this is the two-disc uh, deluxe edition. Sorry, the light is a little bit uh, bright here. Can't really see. There you go. There's the track listing on that. So, yeah. Don't like it as much as... Um, Dave Brubeck, but uh, still very, very good. And then this one was in my sister's collection, Miles Davis, and this is his uh, Sketches from Spain, or Sketches of Spain album. Good stuff. And this one, I can't remember if this was in my bargain bag or not. Uh, Deep Forest, this is kind of a new agey, uh, think Enya without the vocals, I guess is the best way to put it. That's good stuff. And then <clears throat> this one was uh, from uh, the St. Vinny's Thrift Store. Candy Dolfer, uh, this is her album Sexuality, and she was very famous for the song Lily Was Here, which uh, well, it's kind of a call and response song with uh, Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics. So, good stuff. Then we have another album on the higher octave label, uh, Future, Primitive, Future Primitive by Eco. I don't have much to say about that one, it's just kind of your average electronic New Age stuff. And then this one. I think I found... I can't remember where I found this. I'm not going to waste time trying to remember where I found this stuff. Uh, Richard Elliott, the best of. This is... He is a, obviously yet another jazz saxophonist. And then we have a favorite classical group of mine. I've actually seen them in concert. Uh, they're called the Five Browns, and they are five siblings who have all... Uh, they all play piano, and their, their albums are always interesting because sometimes they... It's just one of them doing solo. Sometimes it's duets. Sometimes it's all five of them. Sometimes it's trios. Uh, you know, so they really shake it up and really make their albums interesting by doing it in all sorts of combos and stuff. The uh, vast majority of their stuff is classical repertoire. This is their sophomore album, No Boundaries, which I had autographed when I saw them perform uh, in Eugene several years ago. So good stuff. And then this is uh, a concept album, I guess you'd say. Uh, the Browns in Blue, which is... Uh, songs from uh, some blue songs, but it's, uh, you know, other stuff like uh, Rhapsody in Blue and uh, other stuff like that. But then they kind of went uh, in a, uh, well, sort of a pop route with uh, with show tunes. I guess in a way show tunes are pop. But uh, yes, The Five Browns in Hollywood. That was a kind of a fun album. They do the Star Wars theme, which of course I'm I'm all there for. And, uh, oh, they, they do Catch Me If You Can also. It's been a while since I've looked at the uh, track listing for this. So, yes, two John Williams uh, selections in here. Very good stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm, I'm glad I'm almost finished because my voice is just about done. The last artist I've got, the first, of, the first two of their albums in this block, uh, is a bluegrass combo, Bela Fleck and the Flecktones. And this is uh, their first album, the self-titled. And I've really been enjoying them. I first heard about them, you know, years ago, back in the 90s, when I was kind of expanding out slightly from my new age phase. And I decided to, this, this these guys were instrumental. And so I decided to give them a try. Dropped off of them for a long, long time, for like 25 years, 30 years. So I got rid of their, they might have actually been cassettes that I had at the time. I can't remember. But uh, I decided to give them a try again a couple of years ago. And I've just, uh, I've been fans of them ever since again. And uh, this is their sophomore album, Flight of the Cosmic Hippo. So, uh, yes, there you have Bela Fleck and the Flecktones, and you will see more of their stuff uh, kicking off the next chapter of my whole darn CD collection. But, well, there you have it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed chapter 23 of my whole darn CD collection. So that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and click my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my fellow favorite YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, 
life's too short to be a music snob. 